Welcome to CIHT Podcasts. How do you sort of mitigate the effects of COVID-19 in terms of day-to-day stuff you're trying to do? But equally, how are you going to sort of build the future post-COVID-19, if that makes sense? Yeah, and, and that's where there's a lot of debate about, you know, okay, at the moment what we're seeing is a drop-off in traffic levels, seeing drop-off in uh, air pollution levels. And, and with that, there's sort of a changing environment out there. So is the time now to strike while the iron is hot to really make a huge impact in relation to climate change, travel patterns, you know, build on the potential for sustainable transport? You know, that there's, there's a whole load of stuff that can be done in this space as well as making sure we're looking after the sort of basic highway infrastructure that everybody uses as a matter of course anyway. There's almost too much going on all, all at once, but it's good to actually have that focus. But I'll tell you what, the days go fast. Welcome to the CHT podcast. I'm your host, Justin Ward. Today, we're looking at the latest guidance for the highway sector to deal with operations during the COVID-19 crisis. I'm Mark Stevens. I'm the Assistant Director of Operational Highways at Suffolk County Council, uh, which is part of Suffolk Highways. Uh, I'm also chair of the Engineering Board of ADEPT, which is the Association of Directors of Environment, Economy, Planning and Transport. So at this point in time, I'm working with colleagues in ADEPT, but across the, the highway sector to ensure that as best as possible, the highway sector is working at a local highway authority level as close to business as usual as possible. And where there are issues associated with that, helping to give guidance as to how other local highway authorities can get back to that if they're in a situation where they've actually reduced back to, say, emergency setup only. Part of that is actually making sure that the work their, com- their commercial partners in terms of delivering the highway services and the supply chain are all as engaged as possible and where they may have taken the decision to stop operations but find a way to get them back into operation. Now a lot of that work is taking place in association with private sector as well as public sector partners through something called the Highway Sector Council. So the Highway Sector Council was formed in 2020 and it's the collective voice of the highway sector and that's how it's been trying to set up. It represents a commitment by both private and public sector to work to ensure that roads can improve productivity, drive new technologies and collaborate to deliver economic, environmental and social benefits for drivers, other road users and the wider community. The council is focused on a sector strategy initially on six core areas, which are people, innovation, safety, environment, value and investment and delivery models. So the private sector members include ACOM, Amy, Atkins, Balfour Beatty, Costain, Conway, Eurovia, Jacobs, Kia, Leon Daniels and Associates Limited, Mott McDonald, Ringway, Robert McAlpine, Skanska and Tarmac. The public sector members include ADEPT, the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, the Chartered Institution of Highways and Transportation, England's Economic Heartland, Highways England, Highways UK, Transport for London. So the piece of work that I've been most closely associated with, I guess, is the generating some safe operating procedures for the highway sector in particular. We're very conscious that the the version of the uh, site operating procedures produced by the Construction Learning Council was very much focused on the construction sector, but it was felt that there was an insufficient focus on that, on the highways maintenance and improvement side of construction. So through the Highway Sector Council, we've been looking to create our own adaptation of that into a COVID-19 highway safe operating procedure. And that document picks up on the fact that uh, the highway sector is involved in not just putting in highway improvements, but also carrying out maintenance work, which can re- include reactive maintenance, where the, the, the operatives are actually in and out of sight quite quickly, but also making sure that it's, it's covering the issues of depots and how they should operate safely. So that's a, a key piece of work uh, which we are looking to launch imminently, but equally making sure that we're looking at how the public sector and private sector can collectively work with the DFT to ensure that the highway sector recovers, but not necessarily just recover, but also gets through this period and optimises the opportunity that we have out there because those roads out there are that much quieter. There's an opportunity to really crack on with some work in a safe manner 
observing the social distancing rules, but making sure that we make the most of what we've got out there. These have been not normal times for many businesses. So how close, when you say things are trying to be as close to business as usual, how close is that then? I think it varies from one local highway authority to another, depending upon your circumstances. So part of the, the challenge we've got is where parts of the supply chain are unable to uh, observe social distancing. Part of that is down to the fact that you know, the way in which they operate, the way in which they travel to and from a site, the ability to keep their vehicles clean in terms of, you know, sort of keep them sanitised, the availability of PPE. Some of those are real challenges, and, but equally you, you have the situation where because there's been a, a, a fall off in the volume of work being undertaken, you see the likes of concrete plants and asphalt plants starting to look at the throughput and what's going out through those gates and thinking, that, well, this isn't economically viable anymore. So they're making the commercial decision to, to temporarily close down. Certainly from a, a, a Suffolk perspective, we're working through our supply chain to make sure that we've always got at least one asphalt plant operating. We're, we're pushing ahead with our surfacing programme. Uh, and by keeping that surfacing program going, we're, we're keeping the asphalt coming out the plant, which then means it's available for us to use hot material to go and do planned patching work, uh, our pre-patching in advance of our surface dressing work later on this year. But basically, that uh, by virtue of we're doing that, it means that others can then use that asphalt plant for similar circumstances. Elsewhere in the country, um, it's a bit more hit and miss. Uh, and it depends upon the, the local highway authority itself, whether or not it's uh, a shire council, whether it's got a, a heavy urban environment where it's far more difficult to perhaps deliver surfacing schemes because you've got so many people now at home, cars parked on the street, really difficult to deliver surfacing in that urban environment. Whereas for a county, perhaps with a, a more rural network, there's the opportunity to keep that workforce, that surfacing workforce engaged in, in looking after the network overall. There aren't those same restrictions in terms of parked cars. Um, but equally in terms of those envi urban environments, um, you know, part of the challenge that every local authority has is that there's a limited amount of resource out there. It may be impacted in different ways in terms of um, uh, self-isolation for those people who seem to be picking up on the COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, and therefore, they're drawing resources into some of the areas that they see as perhaps more critical um, than highway maintenance, such as looking after the uh, the elderly and, and the sick, providing that local care, but also making sure that things like the waste collection service is maintained as, as close as possible. Some uh, some authorities have actually reduced that down to the, the collection of just pure uh, waste, rather than actually thinking about collection of recycling, uh, some of the garden off, off, uh, off products, uh, your, your grass cuttings, etc. So it very much depends upon the circumstances which um, authorities find themselves, where their pressures lie. Um, but the, the point I think that we're trying to make within the highway sector is that maintaining that highways network uh, as best as we can, uh, as close to business as usual, is critical. And we are key. We do have key workers. They are arguably critical workers because you, every journey starts and finishes on a local road. And that means that all the people who are key workers who are still going into work at hospitals, uh, GP centres, etc., they still need to get out and about on the highway network. We've got to keep that safe. And so our role uh, in helping making sure that the, the country keeps going is absolutely vital. So part of the, the other aspect in relation to looking after the highway network being a, a key service at this point in time, as much as key as it ever is, to be frank, but I guess in terms of making sure that we stay as close as business to you, as usual as we can, one of the things that we want to make sure of is that the public who are still out and about, and there are still quite a few people who, who are getting exercise, who are travelling to and from work, going to the shops, etc., they do see highway maintenance operatives out on the network. So what we're trying to make clear is that the work that they are doing is essential. So we're making sure that the message is getting out that uh, local highway authorities perhaps should actually be uh, creating and then using uh, additional signage uh, that sort of has the particular local highway authority or the contractor's logo on it, flagging up that these are essential highway works in progress 
during this COVID-19 period because I think that most people don't recognise and don't make the connection between the fact that they're actually out on the network and it needs to be kept safe and it can only be kept safe if we continue to do our work. So that that to us is is quite a key area of activity um, and obviously making sure that all of the people involved in delivering the highway service have the authority to to work in that way. So they have their key worker letters, uh, but we're also encouraging them to carry signs in their vehicles, particularly the ones that aren't liveried, because in order to actually maintain social distancing, some of the operational gangs, for example, they can't all travel in the same truck. Um, so we're, we're making sure that as much as possible, they're able to uh, travel around in separate vehicles. That is having a negative impact in terms of the environment, obviously, in terms of transport costs and everything else, but equally the, the, the exhaust fumes, etc. But at least they're maintaining social distance. But equally, if anyone sees those vehicles around, they can see that they are associated with Essential Highway Works. Part of the, the other aspects I, I, I'd just quickly mention is that whilst we have seen some uh, of the supply chain uh, decide that uh, yeah, they're not able to deliver the service uh, for a period of time uh, because of social distancing uh, and other challenges. Um, what we've been doing uh, in Suffolk is working with some of those, uh, some of our partners, our supply chain partners, and finding out the real nitty gritty of what is it that's actually acting as an inhibitor to them continue to deliver the service. And if there's a mechanism by which we can actually help them get there and, and restart We're doing that. And that's certainly been the case with um, one of our traffic management companies. We've actually managed to get them up and running again just by providing some assistance and clarification about what we expect. Uh, But equally in terms of um, some of the smaller SMEs in terms of the the patching work that they do, they were concerned about the ability to get hold of asphalt. Uh, And But as I said earlier on, because we're continuing with our, our surfacing program in Suffolk, it means that there is also continuity of acquisition material for, for those guys as well. So they can go and get the material, get out there, do that planned patching work or the pre-patching for surface dressing. Uh, and that's given them the encouragement to, to essentially restart. Uh, and, and the more that we can actually do that across the entire highway sector, uh, the, the, the better we will stay and the closer we will stay to uh, business as usual. And it won't be quite so painful uh, when everything does return to normal, because what we're concerned about is there's a a sudden surge of activity at the moment. There's a, a good opportunity to secure road space out on the network. Um, so I'd, I'd encourage all local authorities, if they can do so, to make the absolute most of that. Because when we do all start up again in, in full earnest, there's going to be a real clamour for um, access to the to, to the network. And that's not just going to be from a highway maintenance perspective. It's also going to be from a public utilities perspective where some of those have taken the decision to reduce their work back down to an emergency level. So today the sun is shining. Uh, So think about what uh, from a local authority you can actually do to actually pick up on the level of work you're doing and plan to make the most of the next few months in terms of activity on the network. Thank you for listening to the CHT podcast.